Stormy Daniels testified in Donald Trump's Hush Money trial and was asked to list some of the movies that she's worked on. After she finished, the judge banged the gavel and open oral arguments were the names of the movies. Oh man, that was a good joke. A uh, little play on words they were going for there on Saturday Night Live. They, the audience disapproved of making fun of the star witness against Donald Trump because that's the jury pool there in New York. It's a lynch mob. You know, the Democrat Party, they've always been a lynch mob. Aha, aha. Bad. Bad to the bone. Happy Monday and uh, welcome back. America continues the fight against the crazy people of the world. Unfortunately for us, the crazy people of the world have taken over one of our major political parties and our media and uh, got several media stories today too and some people waking up to the fact that that our media, they're not saying it quite like this, but they will soon enough. The media is the most corrupt institution in America, very important to the Democrat Party's success as well. So we've got a bunch of that going on. And and there's a lot more, too, because uh, Joe Biden, Donald Trump had a giant rally. Joe Biden did not have a giant rally. He couldn't have a giant rally because nobody would show up. It's so sad because... Only the pity party would show up for a Joe Biden rally. People would look forlorn. They'd clutch their hands in front of them, interlocking their fingers, batting their eyelashes. Oh, poor Joe. Look, he can't even walk across the stage. No big rallies for him. There will be no debate, even though they keep saying there will be a debate. You notice that there is no debate scheduled, no debate being talked about. He just has to say, set it up. And the news media says, oh, see, he really wants to debate. He's really smart. He's capable. Uh, But they're lying to us. Uh, In New York, the Democrat Party is lynch mob. They have a number of lynch mobs targeting President Trump. Washington, D.C. and Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, Florida, they got them all over the place. Lynch mobs everywhere. Lynch mobs, lynch mobs. You're a Democrat Party. But they have Michael Cohen, a convicted liar and perjurer. He's going to start testifying today. They plan on holding him for a long time, have him testify to a lot of stuff. They're hoping that He's not going to just say, well, I was his lawyer and I was paid for uh, providing a legal service. And that was uh, arranging a non-disclosure agreement, which all of the networks covering this trial have done again and again. All of the newspapers covering this trial have done again and again. Non-disclosure agreements. No big deal. And they're pretending. Shh, shh. Whistling past the graveyard on this one. Somebody should do a story on the hypocrisy of the news media and non-disclosure agreements, but we don't have much in the way of a news media these days. At the Duke University, you know, they've always said that Duke is the Harvard of the South. This is kind of a nickname that I assume Dukies gave to themselves. We're the Harvard of the South, like that's uh, something to be envied, uh, to be the Harvard of any place, the Harvard of the South. Uh, And Jerry Seinfeld of uh, the TV show Seinfeld, that's why they called it that, he uh, he was chosen as the commencement speaker, and and it wasn't a huge deal. It was it was an interesting episode. Uh, dozens of dookies walked out in a huff as Jerry Seinfeld was being introduced, and they're I think they were humming Deutschland über alles as they they walked out stamping their self righteous little left wing feet and their little anti-Semitic feet. And uh, Jerry Seinfeld, being Jerry Seinfeld, I've always liked him very much. I like him more now than I did even a couple of months ago because he's been speaking up and telling the truth and not being an idiot about it and just being a normal person. And it's been nice to see there are so few normal people remaining, particularly Hollywood, uh, you know, lefties. And, you know, he's no conservative or anything, of course. But he recognizes the obvious, and he won't be shamed into denying it. In any case, he uh, gave the commencement address, and a bunch of lefties walked out stamping their little feet. And um, uh, and it's an interesting, there are some interesting moments surrounding this. And, and they proved because of this, uh, and they, they did it because he's a Jew, all right? 
So Deutschland über alles to the little morons who call themselves liberals, of course, that uh, stamped out of the of their own commencement uh, at Duke University, please. Uh, but they prove that they are the Harvard of the South at long last. They've confirmed that Duke is the Harvard of the South. They got these Jew-hating lunatics, some. But really, uh, uh, one of the students who graduated yesterday said there were probably about 40 of them. I think there might have been a few more than that, but not a lot more, that uh, stormed out of the place in a huff. And the rest, and and uh, most of the crowd started chanting, Jerry, 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 because they support Jerry Seinfeld. And they're not anti-Semites. They're not Jew haters like the people that walked out trying to uh, do their best impersonation of Harvard. Uh, Harvard, they're Harvard of the South. So we've got that for you. It's kind of, uh, there, there are a number of interesting elements in that story, and I will, I will share them with you. Uh, Democrat Senator Bob Menendez, wasn't he in trouble for the underage prostitutes in the Dominican Republic? And then the Democrat Party just swept that under the rug and the news media, they made that go away. No big deal. Then they found gold bars, his house, where he had that uh, gift of a Mercedes Benz out in the driveway that uh, his wife was driving. And then uh, stacks of gold bars in his house that were given to him by foreign interests. No problem. That's, uh, come on, what are you going to say? Hunter Biden did something wrong too. And pockets full of cash. He's got a closet full of jackets, and all the jackets had their their inner pockets with stacks of cash uh, inside his pockets. And he's like, what? Doesn't everybody do this? Uh, it was all perfectly normal. Well, jury selection begins today in his trial, and it looks like he's planning on blaming his wife and hoping that she'll go to prison Apparently, they've got a weird history themselves, not altogether wholesome, it would be fair to say. Uh, And the Hollywood actor Steve Buscemi is in the hospital today, recovering from a racist hate crime attack by an African-American man who looks like he's a professional fighter or something. This guy that attacked him is, and he's got a gray beard. The guy looks like he's in his late 40s. Uh, maybe 50 years old, and he attacked Steve Buscemi. Looks very healthy and prosperous and uh, not poor. He's not homeless or anything. He's just a New Yorker who goes around assaulting white people. Uh, he's a black guy, and and uh, Steve Buscemi is still in the hospital. And if you live in New York, this doesn't even surprise you. If you live in New York City, it's like, yeah, this happens all the time. This is normal now. This is what we do. Speaking of uh, normal now, the uh, our, our America's hat, you know who's America's hat, America's largest national park, that's Canada. You remember last year they had all those wildfires, forest fires, wildfires, and it turned out, if not most of them, at least a huge portion of them were arson perpetrated by lefties, people that call themselves liberals, starting fires, forest fires in Canada because they'll show you about the environment or something. And then the clouds of smoke from the from the Canada fires, they came down to the United States. And I told you that they were uh, choking people in Chicago, Illinois, weeks before the news media was talking about him because the news media didn't talk about him until the clouds of smoke reached New York City, where the news media have their headquarters for the TV networks and the, some of the big newspapers. Then it became big news because, hey, wait a minute, now this is a real issue. It's affecting us. They should treat, treat crime the same way, uh, but but never mind that. So the wildfires, Canada now has 146 wildfires right now, and they say it's the beginning of fire season. They got a season for it now. It's the beginning of wildfire season, fire season. Completely nuts, 146 fires already ongoing. And the smoke is already clouding up Minnesota and Wisconsin and the Dakotas. And uh, the news media won't report on it because it's not in New York and they don't care about the Dakotas and Minnesota and Wisconsin. But I'll get uh, that. And when will we finally retaliate against Canada? They had the same thing they did last year. Now they're doing it again. And they stopped grooming their forests, you know. They groom the children, but they don't groom the forests anymore for whatever inexplicable reason. And it's, well, the reason is lefties, and they, they won't let logging companies go in there and, and uh, clear-cut or selectively harvest, and that means the roads don't go in there and the because the logging companies would always put the roads into the forests and the firefighters could get in on those roads. 
But when they stopped that, the roads disappear, the firefighters can't get in there, the wildfires go out of control, and it's another environmental success story. Just amazing. Also, the United Stinking Nations, which is uh, uh, headquartered in a building in New York, New York City, that should be condominiums. They need to add uh, balconies to that building and, and sell it off as condominiums. And they should move the United Nations to Burkina Faso. They should move... The headquarters for the UN should be in Ouagadougou. Uh, Ouagadougou is the perfect place for the United Nations. It fits their mentality, their worldview, their culture, and their economy uh, much better than New York City and the United States of America. I say hak pui to the United Nations, but as you might imagine, the United Nations uh, has done a review of the alleged casualties of the terrorist troglodytes in the Gaza and the United Nations came back and they said, hey, wait a minute. You know, the, the Hamas terrorist group keeps telling us about all the people that have been killed by those dastardly genocidal Jews. That's what Ilhan Omar calls them. She's a Democrat member of Congress in good standing with the media and the Democrat Party. But I repeat myself. Well, the U.N. has come in and they have cut in half the number of women killed in this war against Israel, a superior country and a superior culture in every way. And they've cut in half the number of children killed by the dastardly genocidal Jews, as Ilhan Omar calls them, and as these chanting morons on American college campuses call them. So I said, wait a minute, we actually looked at, and I cut the number in half months ago based on mathematicians looking at it, scientists looking at the fake counts provided by a terrorist group. And now the the United Nations, which is completely corrupt and fake, they've come out and said, well, the number of women killed and the number of children killed is about half of what the whole world has been told by Hamas, which is a genocidal terror group. And uh, so the number has been cut in half by the United Nations. That means liberals have to believe it because... They have tiny little brains, very small brains. And at the same time, Joe Biden is saving Hamas leadership and saving the Hamas brigades in Rafah. Uh, He's doing everything he can, withholding weapons shipments to, to Israel so that they can't kill the leadership of Hamas. Hamas will survive. They've promised to come back and give them October 7th again and again and again. A thousand times they said they would give them uh, October 7th again and again and again. And Joe Biden is is, is um, uh, saving them, saving the Hamas leaders. He's preserving them. He is refusing to hand over weapons that were authorized by Congress so, and paid for, allegedly, by Congress in the same way we pay for everything by not paying for it because everybody's a crook. But he's withholding the weapons, and now he's promising to give the Israelis some really great intelligence that we have if they just don't go after Hamas and the leadership of Hamas and the Hamas brigades in Rafah, which is where they are. You know, why did, uh, what's his name, Rob Banks? Uh, you know, because that's where the money is. And why do you uh, uh, go after Rafa? Because that's where the Hamas leadership is. And if you don't go into Rafa, you leave them to fight another day. Also, Joe Biden's Department of Veterans Affairs, the Veterans Administration, they've got a lot of uh, uh, services they provide to veterans, to veterans. We've got a lot of combat veterans right now, too after the troglodytes started a war against us, crashing planes into buildings and stuff. We've got a lot of veterans, but if you're white, if you're a white veteran, you need not apply for these Biden administration programs. They love programs for veterans, just not for white veterans, because they're racists. And honestly, we're thinking about taking away electricity and phone travel, uh, excuse me, air travel and your phones. Where you, uh, well, I was on the, uh, the patriarchy Zoom call the other day, you know, for the terrible white people. And uh, we're thinking, hey, you know, come on, we give you instantaneous global communications and smartphones and air travel and 
We give you electricity, clean water, and uh, still you act like a bunch of petulant children stamping your feet and pounding the table. Not only no dessert for you, we're going to start taking away all this white stuff. Just saying. But at the VA, if you're white, you're not eligible for a lot of their programs because the left is in charge and they're bitter, resentful, not very productive, not very inventive. Come on. We, we became bored with chipping golf balls on the moon a half century ago. What have you guys been doing? We're at 888-630-9625. Also, there was a uh, there was a moment at the graduation ceremony at Thomas Jefferson University in Philadelphia, where they it's a classic DEI uh, incident here, where they they hired somebody who was like a Key and Peele substitute teacher skit, where the person trying to pronounce the names of of people named like Michelle and Elizabeth. And the person reading the names as the students came up on on the stage to get their diplomas, uh, the names were so mangled that it was like a satire. Uh, but at least they're you know they're all DEI checked. They got their they checked their DEI boxes. Pretty amazing stuff, I gotta tell you. Uh 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 uh. Uh, and you know the. Uh, Here's another one. Wild video shows left-wing activists cheering Iran's attack on Israel and Chicago and chanting, Death to America. That's your Democrat Party. They've joined the worldwide jihad. Pretty amazing times we're in. Your Democrat Party. They're not normal, are they? No, they're not. Uh, Okay, and and so we have a only, only three hours. We have a three-hour program to get to with a whole lot of Stuff the Democrats, they give me, especially over a weekend, they give me more than three hours of material. They give me more than three hours of material any weekday. And this weekend, they gave me a lot more commencements and um, IQ tests. Every day is an IQ test, always remember. And the White House is concerned about Donald Trump, too, as they should be. Howard University. Howard University is here in Washington, D.C. Kamala Harris went there, I think. And it's an HBCU because we have to abbreviate everything. It's a historically black college and or university. And uh, pretty wacky stuff there this uh, this weekend. Uh, and so let me let me go to the let me go to this from Howard University. Here is. Here's the headline from Red State. Howard University cancels graduation mid-ceremony. It was actually during the commencement address in chaotic scene. Now, here's what happened. Uh, Howard University, they've had a graduation, and they've got a big hall, a big like theater-like setting. But uh, there were not enough seats for the people that showed up for for the graduation, and so a lot of people were locked outside, and it became a violent scene, and and there's a glass wall, and uh, they smash the glass, the huge glass panes in these big glass walls. Nope, it's not what you think. It wasn't uh, pro pro Hamas protesters this time. We've seen anti-Israel protests at several graduations, seen commencement ceremonies canceled altogether as some universities bent their knee to the violent mob. But we haven't seen this before. Red State writes, a graduation ceremony for nursing students at Howard University in Washington, D.C. was canceled right in the middle of the keynote address on Thursday after furious parents who were locked out due to capacity issues pounded on the doors, even smashed a window. Mm Mm-mm. It was a chaotic scene. The tensions flared because the venue simply wasn't large enough for all the families who came to watch their loved ones walk on stage. There was at least one injury. Now, this is um, you know, a couple miles from the radio station where we uh, where we sit right now, and it's not known for 
trouble. This university is typically pretty mellow. But um, the nursing school graduation didn't go very well at all. It's a riot. It's mayhem. The fire marshal came in and said, this is way too crowded, and it's gotten rowdy. It's gotten violent, and this big uh, panel of heavy glass, huge window, it was an insurrection uh, is what it was. They were, it was an uprising against an established authority. In this case, it was just, it was just the Howard University administration. And, and uh, then the D.C. fire marshal came in and said, you know, we can't have this. This is out of control. People are going to get, get hurt. This is bad. And uh, so they took to the microphone, and it's time for this to stop. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear them, please. Because we got a big problem. First of all, we want to thank our keynote speaker. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Because of the size of the room, and because our relatives sometimes do not know how to act, the fire department is down here to shut us down. What? Yeah, that's, uh, you know, there, there, so there you go. We had to stop in the, in the middle of the keynote speaker. There was loud banging um, for 10 minutes straight. It was mayhem. I'm confused. Why did it get so crazy? How it got so quick, so bad, so fast? Uh, one administrator decided to blame the families. It's the family. And, you know, and look, it, it well, families showed up. They wanted to get in. They wanted to see the graduation, but it was scheduled in a, a very large venue, but it wasn't large enough, so it became absolute mayhem. And they stopped it. They canceled it. It's, uh, it's over. It's one of the graduations for the nursing school. There are other graduations I, I assume have gone off as planned, uh, but there was a there was a particularly crazy moment. We got some Nancy Pelosi for you today too. At Thomas Jefferson University, Thomas Jefferson University in Philadelphia, in Pennsylvania, and uh, here's the headline from WPVI in Philadelphia: Thomas Jefferson University apologizes after presenter flubs names. Now, that's pretty generous. The presenter was, uh, clearly, this is a, a case of DEI. This is, uh, uh, didn't earn it, up the yin-yang. But they had a woman of color to uh, uh, stand at the podium with a microphone and read the names of the students as they came up on stage to get, uh, to get their diplomas at the Thomas Jefferson University in Philadelphia. And with names like Allison, Nicole Bishop, and pretty obvious uh, uh, Elizabeth, and the the person reading the names just couldn't do the simplest of Western names that you've seen all your life. And they haven't identified the woman that is reading, and with good reason, that is reading the names as they're coming up on stage. But some of the students... Uh, sort of laughed and pointed at them and kept walking and looked at their friends in the crowd and laughed and waved like, it just totally mangled my name. Others uh, turned to the woman and shouted at the, at the woman and at administrators, and others came up and yelled their names, correctly pronouncing their names, because it sounded like this, like with Allison Nicole Bishop. Victoria Lee Zubeth Bross. Jaseku Lynn Boer, Alisuna Cole Bishop. Hang on, Allison. hang on, hang on. There's see here comes uh, here comes Allison now, and and it's uh, like Molly Elizabeth Camp. Much too much for the lady. Allison Care Camp Bull. Campbell, it's uh, Karen, and it's uh, Campbell, and uh, and the woman just couldn't read anything. She couldn't. All of these, Allison Nicole Bishop was a complete mystery to this woman. Sarah Virginia Brennan was way too much for her. Uh, Maeve Elizabeth Brotowski, she actually got Brotowski right, but that's about it. Tom May. Thomas. 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 She couldn't pronounce Thomas. 
And there's a woman standing there uh, next to her just saying, wait a minute, you can't pronounce Thomas? You can't read the name Thomas? It's T-H-O-M-A-S. It's Thomas. You can't read the name Thomas. And that's right, she couldn't read the name Thomas. Uh, really remarkable stuff. at the, Of all places, the Thomas Jefferson University uh, couldn't pronounce Thomas Jefferson. Just amazing stuff. Maeve Elizabeth couldn't pronounce Elizabeth to save her life. It was truly remarkable stuff. And we're having technical difficulties with the, uh, with the computer system, and the whole thing just blew up. And that's not good. Um, but, yeah, trying to pronounce Maeve, trying to pronounce Molly Elizabeth Camp. Couldn't pronounce Molly Elizabeth Camp. Completely butchered it, mangled it. And, and they've got, they had a nice presentation. They had a video thing. Thomas Michael Canavari Jr. And uh, she couldn't get Thomas. She couldn't get Michael. And she's the person they chose to read the names as people came up on stage. Alisuna Allison. Paul Bishop. Sayer Uvun Jinju Brinan. Uh, I'm sorry, that's Sarah Virginia Brennan. Maybe Lee Zubeth Eliz- Rotowski. Elizabeth, that's Elizabeth. Marlena Zubeth Camp. Molly Elizabeth Camp. Tom Mume. Thomas. Tom Mume. It's Thomas. Thomas Michael Canavari. Tom Mume. Tom Mume, she couldn't get Thomas Michael. This is a university. It's a college. And Thomas was too difficult. Michael was too difficult. Elizabeth was too difficult. Uh, Maeve, okay, Maeve. And Brennan, she couldn't get Brennan to save her life. It was really something. And the reason for this is is Democrats. That's the, that's the full explanation. It's a one-word explanation. But honestly, Allison Nicole Bishop was butchered. Sarah, Sarah Virginia Brennan, completely massacred. Maeve Elizabeth, she could, Elizabeth stumped her completely. Couldn't pronounce the word Elizabeth to save her life. This is Thomas Jefferson University. Molly Elizabeth Camp was, was just, she fell down a flight of stairs. Just extraordinary stuff. Uh, uh, uh. And, you know, they'll always have this to remember their college graduation. And Thomas Michael, uh, Canaveri, and the another woman there just uh, exasperated said, Thomas. Tom moved me. Thomas. They're at Thomas Jefferson University, and she can't read, understand, comprehend, and pronounce the name Thomas. Just amazing. And she is the one they chose because DEI. Let's take a roll here. Jay Quellen. No Jay Quellen here? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, do you mean Jacqueline? Okay. So that's how it's going to be. Where is A.A. Ron right now? Where is A.A. Ron? This is a, a great comedy skit done years ago by Key and Peel called The Substitute Teacher. Uh, and uh, he explains uh, that. Uh, African-American teacher comes in, I said, I've been working in the inner city all these years, and now he's working in a white suburban school. And, um, you know, the kids are named Aaron, uh, but he calls him Aaron. And honestly, this this, uh, Thomas Jefferson, she couldn't pronounce Thomas, and she's announcing the people graduating at Thomas Jefferson University. And here's the thing. These are the people running so much of the country right now that, um, well, it explains a lot. This is the rabbit hole that we have, that we have slipped down into. Just, uh, just amazing. All right, let's go to, um, let's go to the telephones. Let's go to Steve calling from Sarasota, Florida. Steve, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Hey, Chris. Um, I just uh, had a graduation. Uh, and uh, we went went uh, as smooth as can be. They had some agitators come in the day before, 
And uh, they told me if you leave by the end of the night, they didn't leave. They maced them, took them off campus. We went, we had to, they had three graduations, 3,000 people. They, uh, um, it, it couldn't go more smoothly. Plenty of police presence. It's just. What, what, what university was it? The University of South Florida. All right. And there was, and I, I, there was in the news, of course, national news, that some of the uh, uh, genocidal anti Semite pro radical Islamic terror protesters showed up. And the governor, because you have a real governor who doesn't have his head wedged into a dark and remote location, he sent the police in. And as you said, they, they maced and pepper sprayed them and said, we're clearing this out. You guys get out of here. And then you said they had three graduations and everything went smooth as silk. Guy, the guy was amazing. He, three, he runs through 3,000 names, doesn't miss a beat. They hug everybody. Everybody had a great time. It was was beautiful, love all over the place, and just a, a great ceremony. And they were telling the kids, hey, you know, there was some trouble on campus. They were indicating that maybe there's going to be something. Nothing. These people did nothing down here because they're, they know that they're going to get dealt with if, if they pull some antics and frantic you know down in uh down in florida it's just amazing to hear all the stuff going on when we had such a beautiful ceremony that is great you know, what I, you know chris I, you know what i would do i would take any of these people who are caught disobeying any order i'd say hey remove their student loans any any professors you lose your tenure all you have to do is have a sensible president right now any any outside agitators that come in get caught disobeying orders put them in jail for 30 days this thing would be over to tomorrow on these campuses but nobody has any sensible you know anything and i'm not i'm not advocating acting like a dictator or anything like this but but you know you you have some situations like that that are creating distress they want this distress they want a color revolution make these kids agitated and stuff like create all this upset right before the election this is what their intent is well, you're absolutely right, and we learned last week that there are a lot of uh, big-time national, even international uh, left-wing groups who self-identify as Marxist groups that are organizing uh, a lot of this and and that are involved. There are a bunch of 40-year-old professional left-wing agitators. Where was it at? Uh, where was it at George Washington University, where I think 33 were arrested, and only, only was it eight of them or 11 of them? went uh, 11 of them were actually students there and the rest were not. So 22 of them were outside agitators, as Democrat Sheriff Bull Connor used to say when he was loosing the the uh, German shepherds and the fire hoses on the civil rights protesters, um, uh, because that's the history of the Democrat Party. But you're right, Steve, of course, is that, and, and um, the Florida proves it, and, and your governor, Ron DeSantis, proves it that you know, a little bit of order goes a long way. And just restoring regular order, as we try to say in Washington, D.C. and on Capitol Hill, uh, very important. Uh, and it doesn't take that much, as you said. So was it who uh, who graduated? Whose graduation did you watch? Uh, my son, he uh, he graduated in business communications and economics, uh, magna cum laude. Oh, sum- summa cum laude, I'm sorry. Three uh, nine, three nine, between three nine and four oh. And he's a great kid. And we had a great time. We had family in town. They all loved it. We went on a boat afterwards. Had an unbelievable time. How great is that? Sarasota, Florida. Round of applause for you, Stephen, for your family. For being normal. That's all it takes now is just being normal. And Biz Econ. See, that's a smart kid. He's got something worthwhile. He's going to be a businessman and make a good living and be a normal person. That is so great. Uh, Steve, thank you for your story. Thank you for your call. All right. um, So much crazy. So much crazy. So little time. Uh, Let's go back to the telephones, Michael, because this is a this is a big story, actually. And and Doug calling from Clifton, Virginia, wants to talk about this big story. Doug, you're on the Chris Plant show. Thanks for having me on, Chris. Um, Now that the United Nations has halved the estimate of women and children that were killed in Gaza. I'd like to know, and I'd love Peter Ducey to ask Karine Jean-Pierre, does this, doesn't this show that Hamas is a habitual liar when it comes to their numbers? Doesn't this show that Israel has taken extreme efforts to protect civilians in their efforts to get their hostages back? 
And I'd like to know, is this going to change the Biden administration's calculus, their thinking on um, um, whether or not they're going to continue to withhold weapons and munitions from the Israelis now that it shows that the Israelis are not harming people without thought or concern and clearly that there is not a genocide? Isn't the Biden administration, should they change their behavior? Well, they should, but they won't because they don't care about the number of people killed in Gaza or the number of people killed in Israel, for that matter. They care about the number of votes they're going to get in Dearborn, Michigan, and in Ilhan Omar's district in Minnesota. They care about raw power. Uh, but you're 100% right. Now, <clears throat> the there are many articles. There are several. Now, you know, the Washington Post is not reporting it, but United Nations halves estimate of women and children killed in Gaza. Without any announcement, the United Nations significantly lowers its previous stated casualty list in the Gaza Strip. They had told us there were more than 9,500 women and more than 14,500 children among the fatalities that were killed. And they put that out on May 6th. And then two days later, without saying anything to anyone, the number was revised significantly downward. Today, they're saying fewer than 5,000 women, not 9,500. Fewer than 8,000 children, not 14,500 children, as the UN had officially listed. And then the news media goes, but they say, oh, no, the UN, the UN says that. But that's because they're lying Sagsajuia, and, and everybody knows it. Uh, but it's remarkable. And in fact, what they say is that those are the numbers for casualties. Now, casualties doesn't mean dead. That means killed or wounded. So now we're going to have to revise them again. 